Layers provide a secondary system for modulating visibility of objects, faces, and edges. A lot of people coming to SketchUp with an AutoCAD background assume that layers play such a central role like they do in AutoCAD, but that's just not the case. Layers are here, and yes, you can use them, but SketchUp is actually more like 3ds Max in the way that you work by hiding objects and unhiding them. And you've seen already there are many different ways to do that. Layers are actually there as an alternative system. It comes in handy from time to time, and it does become essential when you import geometry from a CAD program. To work with layers, you need to have Entity Info and the Layers windows open. Let me select this object. Right now, everything in the model is on layer 0, and you can see that right here. It's the default layer. Every SketchUp model must have layer 0 at the minimum. You can't rename this layer, and you can't delete it. You can add layers manually down here like this. And notice that every time I do that, the layers have colors that are generated automatically by SketchUp. You can also create a layer by typing something in right here. I'll just call this 3 and press Return. This layer is generated. It's out of alphabetical order because of the fact that I just typed in 3. If I want to keep it organized, I'll type in the word layer here, and it automatically gets resorted. I can toggle the visibility of the contents of that layer by clicking on the checkbox. If you don't like this particular color, you can change it using your color picker. But that's about all that layers carry is the visibility checkbox and the color. In AutoCAD, there's about a dozen different things that layers toggle on and off. So it's refreshingly simple here in SketchUp. Once you do have a layer, you can select another entity and change it to that layer using the drop-down. So layers are really an object property. That's why we're accessing that information through Entity Info. You can put faces and edges individually on different layers if you wish, although I recommend against doing this. You can get very confused as a result. I can't tell what's on what layer because everything's just the original default color. We can get a look at the way that layers are organized in the model by coloring everything by layer. And then we can get a more graphic sense. Incidentally, if you have additional layers here that aren't used, you can get rid of them in a hurry by purging. It's only going to get rid of layers that have nothing on them. I'll select layer 3 and delete it. I'm prompted that this layer is not empty, so I have to choose what I'm going to do with the contents of that layer. I can move it to the current layer or the default layer. This is another word for layer 0 or I can delete the contents of the layer entirely. I'll move it to the current layer. This radio button right here indicates which layer is current, and there can only be one layer current at a given time. If I make layer 1 current, and then I go ahead and draw something, that something will be on the current layer. I'll make layer 2 current and draw something else. It has a different color because it's on layer 2. You don't change objects' layers by using the Layers window. Instead, you select everything, and then use Entity Info to make the change. Be careful in Entity Info that you don't inadvertently click the cursor in there, and then type something, because then you're going to be creating a new layer. I can hide this object by pressing H. So even though I see Layer 2 is visible, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm seeing everything that's on Layer 2. Remember, layers are independent from the regular modulating visibility controls that you've learned about in the previous video. Layers can get confusing, especially when you work with groups and components. Take this geometry for example. I'll triple-click to select All Connected, and then create a group by pressing Command-G. The group is actually on Layer 2, because Layer 2 is current. The geometry in here is blue, indicating that it's on Layer 1. So this is kind of a strange situation here, and you should try to avoid this wherever possible. SketchUp works just like AutoCAD, in that the geometry inside a group or component should be on Layer 0, and then the group or component itself can be moved to a different layer. If you don't follow this advice, you'll have this confusing situation. Here I'll make Layer 0 current, just so I can play with Layer 1 and Layer 2. You can't turn off the current layer. It just gives you a warning. So let's think about this object. The group is on Layer 2, but the contents of that group are on Layer 1. If I turn off Layer 2, 
it disappears. If I turn off layer 1, it disappears. So this is very confusing. A much better approach is to go into the group, select everything, place everything inside the group on layer 0. But now you've got to be wondering, why did everything just turn brown? I just set it all to layer 0, which is red. Well, this is as it should be, because layer 0 is defined as a pass-through layer. The geometry inside a container, like a group or a component, inherits the qualities of that container. So in other words, this container is a group, and it's on layer 2, which is brown. So everything in that container should be brown. This actually simplifies things, as I hope you can appreciate. Now, turning layer 2 off toggles the visibility of that particular object, and toggling layer 0 off has no effect on it. This is the system that layers use. I've imported a DWG file from AutoCAD Architecture, and as is typical in most CAD programs, you'll have a lot of different layers that you need to manage. One approach is to ignore layers altogether. I could select the first layer here, scroll all the way down, hold down Shift, and select the last layer so I get all the layers together. And then delete, and move to the current layer. However, when I did that, all the layers that were off were merged into layer 0, and that wasn't my intention. So undo, click here to sort by visibility. Now I can see the list of layers that are off, and I can avoid those. I can select this one, go all the way down here, hold down Shift, Delete, move to the current layer, and then I'll get all these and delete them and delete the contents. So now everything's on layer 0. I could then select all, create a group, and build my SketchUp geometry on top of this, acting as a template. Now that's just one approach. On the other hand, I could undo and create my geometry directly from the entities that are here already. In that case, I'm going to need some more advanced layer management tools. Didier Boer at the Ruby Library Depot has created an excellent Ruby script called Layer Manager, and it comes with this extensive toolbar. So let me just show you some of the tools on this toolbar. For example, I'll make a selection here one of the lines that make up this door. I'll click this first button to set the layer of this selection to be the current layer. The radio button jump down here to a door. The advantage here is that sometimes when you're working, you don't want to bother learning the layer name that you're going to work on. You just want to work on that particular layer. Just make a selection, click on this button, and the current layer is changed automatically for you. It saves time from having to learn the name. Scroll down here and click the appropriate radio button. So let me just go back to the door layer, make that current again. And then this next tool moves the selection to the current layer. So let's say I find this stuff over here, which should be on the door layer, but it's on the appliance layer. Well, I'll click here and move it to the door layer. All of these tools are just time-saving features, really. This one here displays the layer configuration, which we don't yet have. This saves a layer config. Let's do that now. Let's just call this layer state A. OK. So that saves the visibility, whether it's on or off, for all of the layers in this collection. It saves it in a text file. So later on, I can go ahead and change things around. Let's say I'm working extensively and making some changes here. I can come back and restore the layer config to A, and we get back to that state. I'm going to skip over these and show you some of these other buttons. This button turns all layers on. This one makes all layers invisible except the current layer, which is a door. Let's just make all layers visible again. This one requires a selection, and I can tell that because there's a yellow tone here on this first layer that requires that I select something. I'll click this and isolate that layer so I can work on it. This button hides particular layers that you select. 
Let me just go back and turn everything on. I'll make some selections and hide those layers. This is an extremely useful tool right here, this red one. Because I can just select a bunch of things and get rid of them by clicking this button. This tool inverts the visibility so I can see everything that I'm not currently looking at. And these are filters, as these funnel icons suggest. I can isolate layers by filtering something out of their name. And this works well when you have a layer naming convention like these. I could filter all of the A-Ano layers out, for example, and I could look at what's on those layers. So you can do that for isolation, showing layers, and hiding layers by typing in filter criteria. So all in all, an excellent toolbar for managing layers.